breast milk science. It's a thing, and it's our thing. We're Byheart. We're an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super, super food on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S.-made formula to use organic, grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We make our formula in our own factories in Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania, using a small batch manufacturing process that works to preserve the integrity of our ingredients. We ran the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in 25 years and clinically proved benefits like easier digestion, less gas, and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. We were the first infant formula company to earn the Clean Label Project Purity Award. And while we've put a lot into Byheart, there's a long list of things you won't see on our ingredient list, like no corn syrup, no maltodextrin, no GMO ingredients, no soy, no palm oil. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. On today's Smart 7, the COVID inquiry hears of Hancock's plans, Israel encircles Gaza City and much more. It's Friday 3rd of November, it's World Jellyfish Day and happy birthday, Ian Wright. The Smart 7, it's news but not the news. There was some good news for households on Thursday as the Bank of England once again left interest rates on hold at an eye-watering 5.25%. That was because even though inflation remains way above the bank's 2% target, projections are that it will fall rapidly over the next few months. The bad news is though that the UK economy will see little or no growth and could be on the edge of a recession. Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey explains. We see the evidence that uh, monetary policy and the rate rises that we have done are now having an effect. And just to remind, we are still at 6.7% in terms of inflation, so there's, you know, there is a considerable way to go. Labour were warning on Thursday that more than half a million households would face the impact of higher mortgage costs before the local elections, which are due in May. And Labour's shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves, says the blame for the whole cycle of rate rises and low growth can be laid at one person's door. Liz Truss's mini-budget last year set in motion the economic turmoil and the increases in interest rates that we've experienced here in the UK. If you look at the US, their economy is growing strongly, whereas here in the UK we've got the worst of all worlds with high interest rates but no economic growth at all. The COVID inquiry turned its attention to former Health Secretary Matt Hancock on Thursday. Sir Simon Stevens, the former Chief of NHS England, was in the witness box and he was asked about Hancock's approach to the pandemic. As COVID-19 hit, the NHS was under tremendous pressure and the issue in government circles was how to manage and prioritise patients for care. During a planning exercise in 2020, Hancock told officials that he believed if the NHS was overwhelmed, it should be he who decided who should live or die and not medical professionals. Sir Stevens did not agree. I certainly wanted to discourage the idea that an individual Secretary of State should be deciding how care would be provided. This week has seen testimony about a macho culture in Downing Street and male-driven decision-making that caused serious problems. Dr Catherine Haddon from the Institute for Government says it's clear that a lack of diversity in views was an issue. We very rarely got a female minister doing one of the press conferences because those perspectives just weren't there, that that real world perspective, but also the difference of a female perspective compared to a male perspective. Thursday saw Rishi's AI Safety Summit wrap up at Bletchley Park after two days of tech talk. The event was certainly a diplomatic success for Rishi in the UK, with appearances from US Vice President Harris, the world's richest man Elon Musk, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and plenty of heavy hitters from the world of tech. It's clear that there is a risk from AI, but it's not clear that those such as Musk who say it could end humanity are correct. What is clear is that AI is already being used to create and spread disinformation with the current conflict in Gaza a focal point for fake and AI-generated stories and images. Rishi spoke at the closing of the summit and he was determined to make Britain's case as a leader in a world of new opportunities. AI has the potential to transform our lives in every aspect, from healthcare to education and our economy. Thanks to the actions we've taken this week, Britain is well-placed to be at the forefront of that change. 
The Israeli army announced on Thursday evening that it has now completely encircled Gaza City. There are reports of close quarter fighting with Hamas forces as the IDF closes in on the network of tunnels that run beneath the city. The Rafa border crossing did open again on Thursday, allowing more injured Palestinians and foreign nationals to cross into Egypt, with more British nationals able to leave. As calls grow for a ceasefire, or at least a humanitarian pause, Palestinian academic Salim told Kay Burley that there needs to be serious consideration about what happens in the long term. The Palestinians have been calling for a two-state solution for 30 years. And because of because you can't have a two-state solution when one party is literally eating and, and grabbing every piece of land of the of the, what's supposed to be the, the land of the, the other state. Still to come on the Smart 7, the Beatles are back and Formula One heads to Brazil. Right after this. Welcome back. Three. The Formula One roadshow heads to Sao Paulo this weekend for the Brazilian Grand Prix. All of the focus recently has been on record-setting Max Verstappen and Red Bull, but Lewis Hamilton is quietly confident that his season is not over yet. Lewis hasn't won a Grand Prix since Saudi Arabia in 2021, but his car and his pace have been improving throughout the season. If he can manage a late run of victories, he could still finish second in the Drivers' Championship, and he's looking forward to the weekend. It's always been a special race for me. I mean, I, I won my first World Championship here. I, it was kind of crazy back then because I kind of felt like public enemy number one. Um, obviously, I was racing against Felipe, but the growth uh, that I've felt here and the reception that I've had here, the amazing support. There was a somewhat unexpected new single on Thursday from the Beatles. Given that both John Lennon and George Harrison are no longer with us, nobody was expecting that the legendary British group would be heading back to the charts in 2023. But they are, and it's all thanks to modern technology. Oliver Murray is writer and director of a short film which explains how the new single came about. It's called The Last Beatles Song, and it charts the story of how a lost tape was turned into a track called Now and Then. I sort of think of it as sort of like musical archaeology. John was in there, but just buried under all of this stuff. And what you're able to do with amazing fidelity is peel away these layers and brush away all the uh, frequencies that you don't want. Way back in the 80s, we enjoyed some great TV. It's the era that brought us Wonder Woman, the A-Team, Knight Rider and many more. One show that had been forgotten was The Fall Guy. It starred Lee Majors as a retired stuntman who worked part-time as a bounty hunter and each week he'd track down a villain and spend quite a lot of time rolling over cars or jumping out of windows. Now The Fall Guy is back, rebooted for the cinema and with added star power from Ryan Gosling and Emily Stone, it hits cinemas on March 1st. Tom Ryder... <laughs> The biggest action star on the planet is missing. You need to bring him back. Oh. Jodie's movie is dead. Why me? You're a stuntman. Nobody's going to notice you. That's your job. No offence. I mean, some taken. You find Ryder. Save Jodie's film. You get the love of your life back. I'm not the hero. I'm just the double. Not today, you're not. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world.